Hello and welcome to today's video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Daniela and today I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful bracelet. At first glance, it might look complicated and many beginners might shy away from making it, but trust me, it's quite simple. All we are going to need is one stitch, so it's really fantastic, even a complete beginner can handle it. You just need to have the right tools. So let's take a look at what we'll need for this creation. We'll definitely need a beadman to prevent the beads from running away. And then we will need a needle. It's important that it's a beading needle as a regular sewing needle is too thick and wouldn't work. I use these uh, John James needles size 11 for example. What inspired me uh, to make this bracelet was seeing these amazing crystals. Let me open this up. They look absolutely stunning. They sparkle beautifully. I bought them very cheaply on AliExpress. I'll put the link in the video description as always. They have them in various other colors too. What's also great is that you don't have to sew around them. Uh, they are sewn crystals. When I have a regular cabochon, which I also often use for bead embroidery, I have to sew around it with a peyote stitch, which is quite time consuming. It significantly extends the production time of the product. But here, these holes, you just sew them on, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, so I will put the crystals aside. The bracelet will be on a metal base. Again, I bought it. Oh, oh it's been a, quite a while since I bought it. Uh, I also bought it on AliExpress because I couldn't find blank cuffs anywhere else at the time. I will try to see if the link is still active and I put it in the video's description, of course. It can be stretched out in various ways. Uh, so then you just simply slip it on your wrist like this. Uh, so uh, then I will need some base materials to embroider on. This is felt, a very accessible material. Or you could use ultra suede, for example. I would probably use ultra suede, but I don't have a large enough piece in black right now. I have all other colors, but I've run out of black, so I will do it on felt. Alternatively, there's lacy stiff stuff. I really like the material for bead embroidery, uh, but I don't feel like dyeing it black. Then uh, here I have some uh, light pants to trace the bracelet. Next, we will need some beads. Uh, considering these crystals are already quite striking, I've decided not to experiment with colors except for the edges. And I will make the bracelet black. So here I have Czech Preciosa beads size 11. I also have some cut beads, uh, this is just a leftover. It's wonderful that you can use any leftover beads for bead embroidery. Whatever you have left from another project, that would be difficult to use in another way. It's perfect because you can utilize those leftover beads for bead embroidery. And I want to add some silver accents. Uh, so here I have Toho beads size 15 in color number 21. Simple silver, again just a reminder. And for the edges I will use a mix created from these Czech Preciosa beads size 11. Since I have black beads, I'll be sewing with black thread. This is Eslon. Uh, for the silver beads, I will use a thin clear monofilament. And I will sew the crystals on with 0.2 mm diameter nylon thread to ensure they stay in place nicely. You don't have to use as many threads uh, as I do. You can tailor it to yourself depending on what you have available. So, I will secure uh, the crystals a bit more with glue. For gluing crystals, I use E6000. And when I'm tracing the shape of the bracelet, I will secure it with double-sided tape so the fill doesn't move on the metal base. And then um, I have a bit more here because I like to have options. I have a small manicure scissors, large scissors for cutting out the bracelet, or if you have it, a thread zap. A very useful tool. I have a separate video about it somewhere. And it's everything, so let's get started. First, I will trace the pattern. I will take a piece of double-sided tape, 
stick one piece here on the edge, another on the other edge. Now I'll peel off the foil and uh, like this I will stick the felt on. Wrap it around like this. I will cut out the bracelet. Mm, you don't have to cut it precisely, but be sure to leave some overlap. Now I will take a gel pen and like from this, uh, from the inside, I will indicate the outline of the bracelet. Once you have it traced, take it off. I'll trim it a bit so it's not so unsightly. But remember, you must leave an overlap. Now on the felt, I will plan where I will have the individual crystals. I always place the largest pieces first. Then either we'll make it symmetrical or complete random. I always try different arrangements and imagine and change it. So now I will play with it for a while until I'm satisfied with the result. I think I will do it so that I place the central crystal in the middle. I will measure to make sure I have it exactly in the center. And I will proceed from larger crystals to the smaller ones. I think I'm happy with this arrangement. It always takes me a very long time to be satisfied with something that I will like. I will take the glue and secure each crystal a little with it. All the crystals are now in place and now I will sew them on. I will cut a piece of nylon thread. Make a knot on the back side. And I will sew the crystals through the holes. After sewing on each crystal, you can tie a knot on the back side, but it's not necessary. However, I won't cut the thread, I will continue directly to the next crystal. Try to stitch close to the individual crystals so that the thread isn't unnecessarily visible. So I insert the needle just around the crystals and tie a knot again. And in this way we will sew on all the crystals.
As you can see, I've sewn on uh, the crystals. Here we can see it from the other side. And now I will draw a line where these silver beads will go. I will create a path between colored crystals. And then I'll outline these silver beads with these larger black beads on each side. This will give it a bit more dimension. I think this will be good. Uh, so let's go ahead and embroider these lines with the silver beads. I will cut a piece of fine monofilament. It will be hard to see on the black background, so I will insert a video here where I explain what the back stitch looks like. If we don't count the edging of the final finished bracelet, the back stitch will actually be the only stitch we will use to make this bracelet. I will show you the back stitch in more detail. I will make a knot to secure the beginning of the thread. I will use red thread, turquoise beads and white backing so you can see it all nicely. To contrast, I will cut off the excess thread. I go with my needle through the beading foundation. Uh, this is the back side and this is the front side. I pick up two beads. I'm gonna pull them down to the foundation to see uh, where they are reaching. And I stick the needle right in front of the beads. I'll go back to the beginning uh, and I'm gonna go with my needle through both beads. I'm gonna pick up two more beads, pull them down to the foundation again, uh, stick the needle in front of the beads and go back three beads. And I'm gonna go with my needle uh, through three beads. Except for the first step, uh, I always pull the needle back through three beads. Add two beads again and go back through three beads. Uh, from the other side, it looks something like this. It's quite tempting to add multiple beads at once, uh, but I don't really recommend that because it moves around quite a bit, it's not very stable and it doesn't look nice. On the other hand, sometimes you only need to add one bead. So you add one, you go back through two, three, you will see according to the situation. Alright, um, I'll start by making a knot on the other side. I always try to cut off excess thread so there isn't too much. And I will pass the needle to where my drawn line starts, uh, which is somewhere here. I will pick up two or three beads. I have two here. I will insert the needle at the distance of those two beads. Back before the two beads. And I'll put a needle through these two beads. And again, I'll pick up two beads. I'll insert a needle at a distance of those two beads. I have sewn a lot of these bead embroidery, so I have an eye for exactly where to insert a needle. Uh, but if you are doing it for the first time, it's better to do it this way. If you don't have an eye for it, pick up two beads. Pull them down so you can see where the beads end. Simply insert the needle before the beads. 
and continue in exactly the same way. Uh, so two beats forward, three beats back. I'll insert the needle three beats back. And I'll pull the needle through uh, the three beats. When embroidering with such small beads, it's quite a time-consuming process, but I believe the result will be worth it. If you wanted to speed up the process by threading more beads at once, you might find that it doesn't look very nice. I've tried it because I was frustrated with how long it took, but it was somewhat noticeable in the result, which bothered me. So now I try not to rush the process and just do it diligently. If I was sewing some straight long lines, it was still manageable. Instead of two beads, I could put four at once. But if you thread 10 beads at once and go back by five, it won't look very nice. The beads will stand out a bit. In the case of a bracelet uh, like the one we are creating, it could happen that when gluing it to the metal base, the beads would start to bend in ways we don't want. But I understand the temptation. I've been tempted to, especially when I was under time pressure and wasn't dedicated to YouTube like I'm today. I didn't create video tutorials that you can watch for free. I used to make jewelry for sale. And because um, I did it alongside my regular job, I worked as a project manager, so I did it in the evenings. And sometimes there was just a time crunch. That's why I tried it, but it's not worth it. Bear slow and well done. If you're interested, I can make a video about how I got into this, why I don't sell much anymore and instead focus on videos. I take orders only occasionally. I have a few regular companies that buy products from me, but each of them might make just one or two large orders a year. But they are simple products where the production of one piece takes me about 15 minutes. Uh, but they might order, say, 400 of those products. I've made, for example, uh, woolen flowers for men's jackets. So I still do such orders and I plan to continue doing them. Uh, when I agree on some interesting collaboration, it's always a good experience. But most of the time I dedicated myself to YouTube tutorials. Originally, I didn't even want to have an Etsy shop. I had one before, uh, then I closed it. But since many of you wrote me uh, that you are interested in various patterns and kits and then those bead crochet threads, so I reopened it. I will probably make a separate video in the future about why I no longer sell finished products. It will be an interesting topic because it's essentially due to prices. Handmade items are terribly expensive if the manufacturer sets the price correctly. It doesn't always happen. If I have a complex product, even though I'm very experienced, the production can take several dozen hours. So for it to be profitable, the price has to be incredibly high. Uh, the new product becomes essentially unsellable. Sure, uh, it's said that every product will eventually find its buyer. But in the case of these products, it can take several months or years. And honestly, who wants to wait for that? So to be able to sell these products well, you have to do the marketing very well and find your target group. It's not easy to sell these things. Another thing is that I don't enjoy making the same item multiple times. I'm always in some creative process, so I can hardly imagine making 50 identical necklaces for stock, especially when the production of one piece could take me about, I don't know, 10 hours. With quick project is still manageable for me. And if you were to make only originals, uh, having just one piece of each, it's great because it would be exclusive merchandise, but it also means more work. Because you will have to photograph each piece, edit photos, uh, list each one for sale separately and write descriptions for them. It may not seem like, but it's very time consuming. Moreover, for your shop to be successful, it's good uh, to your merchandise to be consistent. 
That means if you decide to make earrings for polymer clay, there should be really earrings from polymer clay and you shouldn't mix in completely different products. I don't want it to seem like I'm discouraging you. Definitely not. Many people have built very successful businesses on it. I'm just saying that it's not quite the path I, I would like to take. I like to experiment, I dedicate myself to various techniques in the DIY field. It's relaxation for me. That's why I've chosen the path of creating various tutorials. So I have just touched on this topic here and I will probably discuss it in more detail in a future video. Uh, so uh, when you get to the end like this, you don't have to cut the thread at all, but then you get to the back side. If you want, uh, you can make a knot here, but you don't have to. And I will continue in this direction. I will just sew the bracelet this way. To get to this spot. I will insert the needle here. And I will continue in this direction. So now I have all the silver lines done. And I want the bracelet to gain even more dimension visually, so uh, I will start sewing with these cut beads. And for this, I will use this black Eslon thread. Threads like Eslon or Naimo are excellent for bead embroidery because they are very affordable. And unlike nylon, which is less pliable, this thread is very moldable and the beads lie nicely flat. Again, I will make a knot on the back side. The process will be exactly the same as uh, when we were sewing on the silver beads, the classic back stitch. I will sew these larger black beads on each side of the silver lines, which will then gain more depth. I'm afraid that you won't be able to see the black thread with black beads on the black background very well. Uh, that's why I showed the back stitch separately before, so you could see it properly. These black beads are a bit irregular. I don't even know where I got them. The back is unlabeled. It's probably from some swap. I don't think I bought them. I usually don't buy such irregular beads. Uh, sometimes uh, there was an event among bead enthusiasts um, here in Czech Republic. There was a traveling box that was started by... I don't even remember who started it, who founded it. It was organized on Facebook. A lady put a lot of different beads in the box at the beginning, which was sent by mail to other bead enthusiasts according to a list. Everyone could take whatever they wanted from the box, but in return they had to put at least the same amount of beads back in. More often more beads were added and the box kept growing in volume. It was a very interesting idea and I participated in it too. Uh, but I'm not sure now. I think that the box eventually got lost somewhere. Uh, it's quite likely that these beads are from the traveling box. It's great that even such irregular beads can be used for bead embroidery without any problems. With bead embroidery you don't have to worry about absolute regularity. You can also make use of various leftover beads that would otherwise not be usable for any complex project. Here I don't deal with tens of millimeters as with beads for the peyote stage, for example. If I were to sew a peyote bracelet with these cut beads, the result would be truly catastrophic. When I started beading, I didn't know much about the different types of beads. I knew there was our Czech brand Preciosa, 
and that was it. But I bought my first beads at a larger craft store that was more focused on decoupage and they only had beads as a side assortment. There was, I think, just one small bead stand. And now I know that I bought some of the cheapest Chinese beads there, which were terribly irregular. At the time, I had no idea which beads were good and which were bad, so I just bought them. And the first tutorial I tried to follow was to sew a bead ball. And that ball made from irregular beads was absolutely terrible. And of course, it was also difficult to sew. I had a simple tutorial. I thought it wouldn't be a problem at all, but the opposite was true. Today, I can sew the same ball in about 10 minutes. But back then, I struggled with it for several hours and it was still ugly. So today, of course, I don't buy such beads anymore. And whatever supplies I had, I donated them to a school for children for some projects, but they didn't sew anything with them. I think they just glued them somewhere. If I were to get some irregular beads again, I would probably only use them for some embroidery, as I can't think of any other use for them. Be careful around the edges to ensure that the thread doesn't go beyond your marked lines, because once we have the whole piece embroidered, uh, we will need to cut it out. And we must cut it out very carefully, so as not to cut any thread. Uh, so, I've sewn around all the servo lines. I think it looks very nice so far. It sparkles beautifully. And for the rest of the embroidery, I will only use this black um, check beads, Preciosa size 11. I will embroider in such a way that I will always embroider each section separately. Uh, so now I will embroider this part. First, I will make the outline and then I will move inward toward the crystal. The procedure is exactly the same. I will use the back stitch again. So this is how I've sewn one section. We will do the same throughout the bracelet. As you can see, I've sewn black beads everywhere. You can see that I left the edges quite irregular. It's a bit wavy here. I did it on purpose because I wanted to give off a bit of a rustic impression. If I wanted it to be completely regular, I would start by sewing around the in entire outline and then I would start filling the inside. So, uh, when I have it all sewn up, I will take scissors and cut around the edge like this. But I have to be very careful to not to cut any of these threads because it could start to unravel. So I will cut it very carefully. Don't cut all the way up to the bead. It's not very visible here, but I leave uh, a bit of the felt free because I still need to sew the edge. So cut close to the bead, but not all the way to them. And be careful not to cut any of the threads. So this is how I've cut out the bracelet. Uh, you can see that the shape is really irregular. It's a bit wavy, which adds a bit to the rustic look. And once we sew it up, it will look very nice. And now I will glue the bracelet onto the metal base. To make it easier to handle, I will cut some double-sided tape. I will put it here in some places again. This tape will hold the bead embroidery in place on the metal base while sewing the edges, uh, making the work much easier. And because I will also be sewing the inside, I will put the tape there as well. So I have it glued on both sides. I will start with the inside. I will take the same felt that I used for the bead embroidery itself. 
Alternatively, you can use leather or ultra suede, any other material that you like. I will peel off the tape backing and gradually stick it to the inside. Again, I left a free edge because I will be sewing beads onto it. I will roughly cut the felt like this. Then I will trim it carefully, leaving an overhang of about 1 or 2 millimeters on the edge. It doesn't have to be 100% precise because I will cover it with beads anyway. So I have stacked the backside with tape. Now I will peel off the foils from the outside and start attaching the bracelet itself. You could even use glue if you prefer. I like to use double sided tape because it's quick and I can fix it later if needed. Moreover, the connection doesn't have to be very strong because the sewn edges will hold the embroidery in place anyway. Then we will sew the beads on the edges. And because I want to match the color of the stitching to the color of the crystals, I chose a mix that is very similar to the color of the crystals. I don't want the thread to be visible on the edges, so I will use this transparent monofilament again. It doesn't really matter where I start, so I will start somewhere here in the middle. I need to make a knot somewhere here. Uh, so I will put the needle through from the inside. I will make a knot between the beads. It won't be visible between the beads. I'll tighten the knot and trim the excess thread. I will make one stitch from the inside to the outside. And I will add beads. I will sew the edge in two rows. In the first row I will sew the beads one by one and in the second row I will sew the beads in threes, creating decorative waves. I will pick up one bead of any color and I will sew it from back to front. And I like to do this by turning it like this. And from below, I'll pass through the same bead again with the needle. And tighten. And the bead will sit nicely in place. And I continue in exactly the same way. I will pick up another bead of any color. And I will pull the needle from the back to the front. Here, between the bead and the needle, I will leave space the size of one bead. And with my needle, I will pass through the bead from below once more. So it sits in place and tighten. And again the same. And you can see that the beads can uh, be placed nicely next to each other. And we will continue around the entire circumference. I usually do it so that I uh, turn the bracelet to insert the needle into the bead easily. But if that doesn't suit you, of course you don't have to turn it.
When I tighten the bead, I try to lead the thread slightly more towards the front side. It doesn't matter much to me from the inside, but I want the beads to be more visible on the front side. So I pull the thread a bit in this direction. Now I will show it once more without turning. From the back to the front and tighten. So now you see that there is only space for one more bead left here. So now I will sew it. To align it so that the beads is nicely in place, I will pass the needle through the bead that I sewed on first. And also through the following bead. So using these edges, it looks like this. Uh, I want to make the edge even more pronounced, so I will continue sewing. The needle comes out of this blue bead. I will pick up three beads of any color combination. And I will pull the needle from above through the adjacent bead. In this case, this purple bead. And tighten. This creates a decorative edge. I'll pull the needle through the adjacent bead from uh, below to above. Again, I will pick up three beads in any color combination. And I will pull the needle through the adjacent bead from above to below again. I will continue in this way until I get back to the beginning. The principle is always exactly the same. So this is what it looks like finish and I still have a thread that I need to weave in. I don't want to do it on the back side because I want it to stay nice. I will get the needle to the front side. And either I can weave the thread into this edge. It won't be visible, I can make a knot between the beads. Alternatively, I can secure the thread like this on the front side. I also make a knot on the front side. I will hide it between the beads. Don't worry, it won't be visible at all. And I got the thread. So the bracelet is finished. What do you think? The size can be easily adjusted by slightly squeezing the bracelet. 
If you like my tutorials, I would be very happy if you give me a like and write a comment or if you subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on various social media, everywhere I have the same username. Alternatively, if you are interested in premium content, you can find it on my Patreon or here on YouTube I offer membership with various benefits. Happy beating and I look forward to next time. Bye!